Hey guys, I want to announce something super exciting. We have merch. I told you guys I was gonna come with the come with the get down, you know what I'm saying? But we finally have merch. And look, we got mugs, we got sweatshirts. This this sweatshirt, premium. This crop top, premium. We got we even got airpod cases. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We got masks. Ah, ah. We got a pillow, even eh, 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 the pillows are alright. The pillows are alright. You feel me? The pillows are alright. Ooh, look, leggings for the ladies. Ah, ah, put, put my name, put put my name on your thigh. You know you want to put my name on your thigh. Look at these jerseys. Come on, man. You can't tell me these jerseys not fire. Come on, man. Come on, man. You can't tell me these jerseys not fire. Look, this is what y'all been waiting for too. Look at that long sleeve. That is a premium jersey long sleeve. Look at it. I would really appreciate it if you guys went and. Got yourself something nice. Look at this, look at this crop top. Uh, uh, uh. You see, you see our new, you see our new, our new get down. You, you see our new logos, man. You see our new logo. Come on now. Stop playing with your boy. They are going to learn that we are coming as an army. We even got a white version. You feel me? White version of the T. And I'm still creating so much more. So please follow the link in the description and go get yourself something nice. It would mean the world to me to see my whole ruthless army. Tweet a picture at me. DM me on Instagram. All my links are in the description below. Make sure you guys go get something nice and give me ideas. What would you guys like to see on here? Ruthless out. Peace late. Love yous. Back to the video. Yo, what's going on YouTube? We are back. And as you see, we're doing something a little different. A little different to the channel. But I've been wanting to do this for a minute. I've been talking to my friends about it. None of them are here to, you know, bounce ideas and stuff off of, but probably more tier lists in the future and stuff with all of all the other nerds that you love to see. But as you can see, we're doing the MCU tier list. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Justin, why why do you have Spider-Man down there? Well, they are canon now. They're canon now. This is the MCU tier list. So uh, if you haven't seen Multiverse of Madness, if you ain't seen Spider-Man No Way Home, then... uh. Spoiler alert. Spoilers! Get it together. For all ten of you that haven't seen Multiverse of Madness yet. And I know y'all see Thor Love and Thunder down there. I don't know why that's there. I also don't know why y'all can't see my cursor. Can y'all see stuff move though? Okay. There it is. Um, I don't know why Thor Love and Thunder's down there. Semantics. I don't know. Oh, where do we start? Where do we start? As you can see, the tears. You... you if I put it in S tier, that means don't argue with me. You feel me? If you see it in S tier, don't argue with me. The rest of these are all going to be arguable. Remember, this is my opinion. Fight about it in the comments. I I, I know how y'all like to tussle and shit, but y'all ain't, ain't ready for me. And F, just this shouldn't be argued either. We, we know the movie is bad, and we put it down there for a reason. Or TV show, as you can see. TV shows are in here. Some of my favorites are in here, and some of the worst are here. But anyways, to start this off, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Solid D. Solid D. And, and, and here's why. It could have been so much better. What you thinking that it should go in the C tier, right? No, it just it. What did it give us? It gave us Wasp. We could have got Wasp and Ant Man one. And what we got that in credit scene. Well, in in game they replayed the in credit scene, so not in game Infinity. No, in end game, I'm right. Like, uh, I'm sorry. Um, it is what it is. Now, 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 let's, 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 now, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do some things here. You see, you see this, this, this beautiful show right here? Don't play with me. Oscar Isaac's acting skills? Dog. What? This show was so good. And I think it's my, I think it's the best show that MCU has come out with. Legitimately, I think it's the, I think it's the best show in the list. Um, I'm trying to think, What If was pretty good, Loki was good. 
Hawkeye was good. I, I enjoyed the story thoroughly. Daredevil, Daredevil is a main staple, and I'm glad that it has come to the Disney Plus show. Excuse me, the Disney Plus app. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier was good, but like, none of them are beating Moon Knight, and it was only what five episodes long, and none of y'all are beating it. That's crazy. Says a lot about the state of the shows, but you know, I, yeah, I, it's okay. The first Doctor Strange movie is a tier. It's for sure. It's a tier. Or is it B tier? I'm trying to think. What happened in Doctor Strange? He was a Konami douche. He's smart as hell. He picked up sorcery super fast, which obviously that means that he was meant for the Mystic Arts. It's just, that's, it is what it is. And some people don't like that, and I'm just like, bro. Like, you either got it or you don't. I'm sorry. What are you, what are you mad for? I think we're going to keep it in A for now. We're going to keep it in A for now. Shang-Chi, S tier. Argue with your mama. Shang-Chi is arguably the best movie of this phase, for sure. Shang-Chi is, Shang oh my god, Shang-Chi, I'm sorry, I'm saying Shang-Chi like a dickhead. Shang-Chi was very amazing. So, like, man... When I saw it, now I didn't go see it in theaters because I didn't think it was going to be that good because I thought it was like a, uh, what I say, like a, a, a placeholder movie. You know, that, that weird movie that's in the middle of all the big movies. I thought that's what it was going to be. And I was wrong. Um, I was very, very happy uh, that they did something right. Now, I know they changed how the Ten Rings work from how they are in the comics they're completely different but i think it's a good change um i actually really thoroughly enjoy the change so it is what it is oh avengers infinity war was it better than endgame that's the question was infinity war better than endgame because this isn't even an avengers movie this is Thanos' movie. And I'm sure y'all have heard that plenty of times. And he won. But I think they did a... I think they did a solid... What, I think they did re very good. I think, I think this is the most solid... Avengers movie, period. Takes to me. I think, I think it's, I think it's the most solid, uh... Avengers movie besides Endgame. Endgame was a story of redemption. Infinity War was just Thanos' movie. Speaking of Endgame, where's Endgame? Oh, shoot. Is it bad that I don't see Endgame? With that luxurious poster? Where'd he go? There it is. Endgame. Definitely above Doctor Strange. I think... I just... I don't know if it's above... Infinity War. I'm trying to think of the different elements of the movies. I'm just... I'm not sure if... If it was better than Infinity War. Now, we love... You know, we love the Iron Man snap. I am Iron Man. That's our boy. Rest in peace. Captain America picking up me. Ah, yeah. I, I fanboyed. I fanboyed more in Endgame than I did in Infinity War. Endgame's better than Infinity War. I'm sorry. It's not S tier, but... Well... What makes a movie S tier? Gotta think of all the elements that were in the movie. There were a couple of dumb things that I didn't like, of course. You know what? You get an S tier rating. That puts you even more above Infinity War. That's fine. That's fine. Multiverse of Madness. You're a hater if you think otherwise. You're for sure, you're a hater if you think otherwise. And here's why. Spoiler warning one more time. 
they showed us how powerful Wanda really is. That stupid shit at the end with her dying by rocks. Stupid shit by her dying by rocks. I don't think she's dead. And if you think she's dead, then you don't understand how powerful her character is. And for all of you that were sick and mad that she killed Black Bolt the way she did, come on, bro. Stop it. Get some help. Look, if you've read a Black Bolt comic, you know that he's not... He's strong, but he's not that fucking strong. Oh, he killed Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange let him kill him. Let's let's be real. Doctor Strange let him do that. If Doctor Strange wanted to, Portal would have killed everybody else. But that's just me. Um, and they did a great job show, making us terrified of Wanda. Split. Mr. Fantastic like he was cheese. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not cheese. that guy. Right after killing Black Bolt at that. Captain Marvel also died by rocks. That's why it's not an S tier movie. It, the rocks thing is kind of pissing me off. Just a tad. But again, I don't think Wanda's dead. Captain Marvel probably is dead. I guess she just didn't have the reaction time to blow it off of herself. I don't know. Weird, but... It, I can't be that mad at it. But Multiverse of Madness, it opened us up to a whole new world. Like, we were already... Like, you know, we already knew that the multiverse was coming because of Spider-Man, because of Loki. But we didn't know that we were going to be multiverse hopping. Like, America Chavez, oh my god, I'm so glad they brought her character in. Like, I'm, so ha I'm, I'm happy because the Young Avengers are really getting set up for real for real like I, I i oh my god i'm so in love like i love it i love it i'm so happy like it's such a good time to be a nerd bro speaking of multiverse we're gonna go back to our shows if i can find it need to find my glasses don't i oh come on Guys, I'm genuinely blind. Loki. Loki introduced us to the multiverse and variants and that's the time the time stuff was pretty dope basic they're basically time cops <laughs> um trying to think it, it's it's between a and b for me it's between a it was a, it was a good watch it didn't it didn't jump out at me like some of the other shows that are on here moon knight being one <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna give it a B. I'm gonna give it a B. I'm gonna give it a B because, and a lot of you, I'm sure a lot of you haven't watched it. So spoiler warning again. You need to catch up on your. This is a PSA. Catch up on your damn MCU shows. Catch up on them because there's stuff that just makes sense, and they're not gonna explain in the movies. And then somebody's gonna show up and you're be like, why the fuck are they here? Watch the fucking shows. Loki is what we're thinking is what started the multiverse thing. Breaking the the multiverse. Well, partially breaking it. This movie, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Sorry, all of the homes mess me up. Spider-Man No Way Home, which is going in A tier, and you know why the fuck why. Because they canonized all five of these movies, which I know we're gonna we're gonna get to them. We're gonna we're gonna get to the Sonyverse. I promise. We're gonna get to the Sonyverse. Right now we're in the MCU though. This movie was a ten, was a eight and a half out of ten. That's why it's not in the S tier. But anybody that's heading on this movie, you are. So so biased. There were too many cameos. This was all fan service. Yeah, I, shut the fuck up. 
shut shut the fuck up. They broke the multiverse. Like, are you joking? They broke the multiverse. The same way Doctor Strange fucked around and broke the multiverse. Well, shit, it was Doctor Strange's fault on it. Everybody wants to put the blame on Peter for being a kid, but Peter's a kid. The adults in the situation wasn't being an adult. And what's crazy is y'all are mad about that too. But at the same time, that's Doctor Strange's character. If you read the comics, Doctor Strange just does whatever the fuck he wants. In Multiverse of Madness, Wanda calls him out on his bullshit. Wanda calls him out on his bullshit. Sorry, I know I was peeking. Wanda calls him out on his bullshit. You break the rules and you become a hero. I break the rules and I become a villain. That's not very fair. It's not. It's not at all. But it's in Doctor Strange's character. That's just his character. That's just who he is. So you can't be mad about any of those elements in the movie, specifically because it's in character. Now, it's not that in character for Peter, but Peter is one of those characters that has to learn a lesson. Even if it's a dumb lesson that you wholeheartedly believe that he shouldn't have to learn, it's in the character of Spider-Man Peter Parker. He deals with loss as lessons. He deals with making bad decisions that turn into loss so that he learns the bad decision and they talk they talk a little bit about uncle ben being dead and stuff like that and you can tell that he had to go through that but he had to go through that before he was spider-man and before he had his powers presumably because he's not grieving uncle ben at all and he just became in in a a, a civil war he had basically just became spider-man he hadn't even got in a suit yet he was still running around in in rags basically everybody was so upset they didn't need to kill Aunt May if his memory was if everybody's memory was going to be wiped anyway and I was like don't you think it hurts more that he held her in his arms as she died and then he didn't get a chance to move her body at all he didn't get a chance to say anything meaningful. He didn't get to do anything. He just had to watch her die in his arms. And then he got shot and then saw Happy getting arrested and forced to leave. If you think he didn't learn his lesson by now, then you didn't understand the ending of the movie. We know he promised MJ and Ned that he would find them and tell them and try to convince them. He promised he would do that. And then he saw that bandage on MJ's face. Everybody that gets close to me gets hurt. And that's every superhero ever. And that's every superhero ever. And that's why relationships don't always work. Tony and Pepper. They didn't work until half the world got blipped. No, they didn't work until... Before that, excuse me. Which they were still fighting about. They weren't even... Pepper wasn't even really fucking with having kids. But he's, Tony was pushing for it because he said he had a dream about having one and this, that, and the third. And she, you know, she went with it. You feel me? Which is cool. But it took him almost dying for that to even occur. And then half the world got blipped. And so they decided to move away and stop being superheroes and have a kid. And then he got dragged right back into the superhero fray, what she was afraid of. She even says that at the end of the movie. She could never get him to rest until he died. Peter doesn't want to go through that. Of course, when he gets older, he's going to fall. He's still in love with MJ, obviously. He's probably going to. My theory, he's probably going to date Gwen Stacy at one point in time. They're probably all still going to end up being at the same college. Because he's getting a GED and it's hard. It's going to be hard to get into MIT with a GED. But Peter's smart as hell. Pretty sure he's still going to go. Still going to see MJ. Probably going to date Gwen Stacy first. They're probably going to have a little fling. We've got Venom in the universe now. So I think, I personally think that's where that's going. But 
it is what it is. So, if you're mad about this movie, you're just a hater. But let's be real. And I know not all the villains got to reprise all their roles. It was all CGI for Sandman and the Lizard and re-chopped video, re-chopped video footage from the other movies. What are you going to do? Some of these guys are old and have scheduling conflicts. They can't just, oh, Marvel called me. Come on. Oh, Kevin Feige. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll cancel all of my plans with my family just to film a couple. No, no. Come on now. I can't wait to see, oh, I can't wait to see the deleted scenes. Jesus. I know they're immaculate. I think we're going to go back to a show. What ifs? Is it B? What else is it B? Um, this was another, another multiverse breaking um, show, which I think it, they go hand in hand. I think, I think it literally goes like this for multiverse. Goes from... Loki to what if to Spider-Man. No, I think personally, I think these three are happening at the same time for the most part. I think maybe Loki and Spider-Man are happening at the same time. What if after and then obviously Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness. Um, I think that's how that flow of events goes. I think it's very possible that Loki and Spider-Man are happening at the same time or Loki is happening like, you know, Seconds almost before Spider Man. Mm. Uh, and that's why when they make the spell, it breaks so bad. Because a spell like that should have just affected in universe. It shouldn't have even touched the multiverse bef- because of uh, Kang. He was holding the multiverse together, making sure that there weren't any splits and breaks. And then they killed him. And I think that's why the spell went so bad and touched other verses. But What Ifs was solid. What Ifs was a solid uh, show. It was short, of course, but it showed us it showed us what we wanted. It's literally what if this was that. It showed us what if it wasn't Peter Quill that was picked up. It was Black Panther. And I thought that was so cool because he is such a great leader that they all just fall in line for the most part. They can't argue him down off of anything because he's so strong-willed and strong-hearted. He's such a great... Black Panther is such a great character within the MCU and in the comics. Like, that's something that I think that they do incredibly well. And so seeing him in What Ifs in a different role, R.I.P. Chad Bozeman, was amazing. I loved all of it. Uh, even the Captain Carter stuff, I thought that was cool. I thought it was cool to see her as Captain America and how quickly she picked up the mantle. Like, it was so easy for her because Steve hadn't been trained. All he had was his heart. Carter, she had been training her whole life for this. Basically, her whole life. So, of course, she was going to be strong with it. And then they showed us how powerful Vision is. See, that's what y'all don't know. I know he got fucked up in Infinity War emotions and shit like that emotions are every superhero's fucking catalyst it it just uh it kills every superhero ever but it's also a great element so you can't be mad at that either but they showed us what voltron vision would have been and why we should have been afraid of ultron had he got vision's body with the soul stone in it because he clapped thanos and he had what three or four stones already he was there to get. He was there to get the soul stone. I think he had. I think he had four of the stones because he was there to get the soul stone. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, pretty sure he was there to get the soul stone, and he decimated him immediately and took the rest of the stones for himself. Crazy, he killed him in half a second. Took the stones and then became aware of Owatu the Watcher. What? You're not allowed to become aware of that? That that's that's insane to think about. And then we get Doctor Strange evil. Before we even get Multiverse of Madness, we get evil Doctor Strange 
who's drunk on power because he's trying to save Christine, which was a big part of Multiverse of Madness. We got to find out that Steve never ends up with Christine. It always ends bad. He either dies, she dies, she gets remarried. We we found out a lot about Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. That's why it's also an A tier because we finally get a comic book story of him. Like Doctor Strange, like the first Doctor Strange, obviously it was comics related and everything, but Multiverse of Madness really gave us a deep dive into why Steve can't always open himself, which is the trope of other superheroes. He doesn't want anybody to get hurt and he gets scared. So he pushes everybody else away. And we understand that as as the reader, as the watcher, as a fan, we understand that. Like I I would be down to date a superhero, but at the same time, like, I don't wanna die because you got a villain that kidnapped me and tortured me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand you would be afraid. Oh, so we get... I was going to talk about uh, the other story elements that were in here. How the um, the Soul Stone Crusher didn't work because it came from another universe. Which is very on brand for the stones... Well, gems. They're, they're, they're supposed to be called Infinity Gems, but they changed them to stones. Which is fine. It's an art change. Um, which is... A comic book thing. They don't work outside of their own universe. Now, they worked outside of its own universe for Vision specifically because they were inside of Ultron Vision. They were he was basically holding the power in and making them work. And then we get Killmonger as Black Panther, which we which is something we all want to see in Black Panther 2, of course. Can't wait for that to come out. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. But we got Killmonger Black Panther, and he just turned his back on everybody immediately. I mean, Mans is out here murking people that are supposed to be his friends. Tony Stark, still a still a genius, still getting clapped. Didn't matter. That's it. And and that's what y'all that's the conversation y'all not ready for. Black Panther can pretty much clap just about everybody in this list right now. Talk talk to him. Shout out to uh, King and Queen Lion. Talk to him. Shout out to Shango. Shout out to Comics Related. Talk to him. Hey, ding, uh, ding, ding, sorry. motherfucker. Just... This was one of the first movies that made me watch it multiple times. There are only, I can tell you exactly what movies I've watched multiple times because I wanted to, not because it was on TV. Because I don't watch TV. I have watched Black Panther. I went to the theater. I went to the theater for all of these, barring shows, uh, and Shang Chi. Sorry, Shang Chi, and Ant Man and the Wasp. I watched that on Disney Plus. But Black Panther, I watched once in the theater, and I've watched it multiple times on Disney Plus. Sorry, today is uh, today is the anniversary of my graduation from high school. This is this is my fifth year out of high school, and my one of my old teachers uh, just sent me a picture of when we when I graduated. Sorry, I gotta respond. Sorry, where were we? Um, oh, Spider-Man, I went to see that movie in theaters three times. The first time, I went by myself. The second time, I took somebody on a date. And the third time, I went with one of my homeboys. That's why these movies are up here, because of how good they were. Endgame, I've watched Endgame a multitude of times on Disney+. Plus, and I, saw, I watched Shang-Chi yesterday. Uh, I watched Shang-Chi yesterday. 
Multiverse of Madness, when it comes out, I will be watching it again. Infinity Dude, I've I've watched all of these movies a multitude of times. But Black Panther, I'd rather watch that more than I've watched Endgame. Like, seriously. Especially when, oh my god, when Disney Plus first came out, bro, yeah. Black Panther is one of the greatest Marvel movies of all time. Um, and it's crazy because it's a solo film. And it didn't it didn't gross as much as like it grossed a lot, but it didn't gross as much as Endgame and Infinity War. That's fine. And people just gonna hate. But we had an entire movement going on when Black Panther came out. Like, holy shit. Like, I don't know if y'all remember, but we had people show them to theaters in African clothing. We had people doing Wakanda Forever across the world. Oh my God, the the videos that sparked out of this, the social media out, everything, like it was way bigger than Endgame. Like I don't think y'all think about that. Like Endgame and Infinity War may have made more money, but Black Panther as a movie was way bigger around the world than it was anything else. Like regardless of how much money it made, like holy shit like that's probably one of the biggest movies of all time for marvel just solely from what i do just solely from uh the fan outlook like everybody wanted to see endgame and we were so excited for spider-man and everything and seeing tom mcguire and andrew garfield show up we wanted to see black panther that's that's what i remember that's what <laughs> That was some good shit for us. Man, that was a time. When you think about what time to be alive, that was a time. This is the first time that we got black, pure black representation in a major film. Something that was super mainstream, something that everybody was going to see. This is the first time that we just... And, and broke box office records. Like, we... Man, that that's a I can't even top tier. Something that can't be argued for me. Something that'll never be argued for me. Um Which Captain America is this? Captain America Winter Soldier. This one's hard for me because of the controversy of who was right, of Iron Man and Captain America. This one is really hard for me, um, specifically because I don't think either one of them were right. And everybody's going to be like, Team Iron Man, Team Captain America. I personally don't believe either one of them are right. Tony should have been a little bit more level-headed. I understand it was his mother. I understand. Like, I would have wanted to go to bat for my mom, too. But with all of the circumstances that were going on at the moment, that wasn't the moment. That just, it, that just wasn't it. It wasn't the time. Steve... Not going to lie to you, should have spoke up about Bucky. That's one of those, that's, bro, that's one of those things, man. That's one of those things. Wait, 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 wait. Am I thinking about the wrong movie? Shit. Wait, we'll come back, to, we'll come back to that one. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I picked up the wrong one. It was supposed to be Civil War. Um... The same thing applies, though. Um, I don't think either one of them are right. I understand why Tony wants to sign the Sokovia Accords, though. I understand that that was super... They are very... They Vision said it best. They cause people to challenge. They invite challenge because of their strength. And they get stronger every single year, barring when people die or, you know, become the villain themselves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Vision was right. They cause a lot of the calamities that come to earth and but at the same time a lot of stuff was there already 
And had they not been there, it wouldn't have been, you know, people would have died. More people would have died. So, I don't know. I think they're both right and I think they're both wrong, if that makes sense. I feel like the government shouldn't have a hand in any of that, period. The government shouldn't have a hand in that, period. Let's start there. But, um, man... It's real tough. It's real tough to say who was right or wrong because there was so much emotion that went into it. There's so much emotion. I mean, he killed his dad. He killed his dad and he killed his mom. Like he didn't. He loved his dad. Tony Stark's a dick, but he loved he loved his dad for the most part. He killed his mom. Me, I only grew up with a mama. I don't know how I would have reacted in the situation, but I know he reacted. I don't want to say he reacted wrong because we're all different, but I feel like there was a time and a place. Um, And he knows that Bucky was controlled. Like, he knows that. Like, that's something that is in his knowledge, and he still chose to act the way that he did. And Steve, he knew about it for some time. And didn't say a word. Period. Like, that's... Yo... That's a bit above and beyond with that one. Mm. Like, that's some, that's somebody like Steve uh, kept fucking Tony hold hardly believes that Steve is his best friend. For the most part. Even though, you know, they had their, their differences and stuff like that. What? I thought I did. Wait a minute. What the f- Not gonna lie, if I don't get my meals, I'm gonna be pissed. Okay, we're good. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing a pescatarian diet and it's all getting delivered to my door. Um, where was I? Civil War, though. Man, he, I, Steve, that's somebody, one of Tony's only friends. Outside of Rhodey, who got hurt in Civil War, he was pissed about that, too. Over Steve not wanting to at least think about it and try not to break up the Avengers. He just decided... No, I'm going to be as stubborn as I always am and leave. Like, I understand not wanting to be run by the government. But together, you can always come up with another solution. And if all of you want to come up with a solution and you all want to leave the government and say, fuck it, they're not letting us do what we want to do, you can do that. Tony is the smartest person on the planet outside of Shuri. Like, come on. You think that Tony can't hack his way out of a military base? Then you're insane. You're insane. All them going to jail was bullshit, but... Like, bro. Like, what are you gonna do? Oh, Jesus. But Civil War was still... It was a good watch. Uh, it brought a Spider-Man. It brought a Spider-Man in, so that's... We're, we're B-tier. It, it could have been a great movie. Uh, I think it missed a couple elements that could have been an A-tier movie. Like, that's the stupid discussion. I And personally, I think they should have took the comics route and somebody should have died. I'm not going to say who, but somebody should have died. Oh. Oh, people are going to be mad at me. Some people like... Iron Fist, I think that it's probably the worst show on the list. It's probably the worst show on the list, period. I'm sorry. Uh, it's probably the worst. It's like genuinely, I think it's the worst one on this list for sure. As a matter of fact, while we're here, Defenders was F tier too. It was cool to see them to come together and, you know, fight a common enemy and everything. But it's not even memorable. 
That's how I know it's F tier. I can remember some elements of Luke Cage. I can remember the Punisher. I remember a lot of Jessica Jones. I barely remember Iron Fist and the Defenders. And I'm a Marvel stan. I've watched I've watched everything in here and I remember the majority of all of it. Those two shows specifically. They were just bad. The Iron Iron Fist was the worst one. Jesus. They just did that. Terrible. And you know what? I would be cool if they just rebooted completely and new actor, new cast, everything. I'm super cool with that, to be completely honest with you. Because there are other Iron Fists. And in the comics right now, there's a pretty badass Iron Fist that I would love for them to pull into the MCU. Would love it. Um, let's stick with let let's let's finish off the shows. Daredevil, solid fucking A. Daredevil is one of the best uh, shows on the list. Period, for sure. Um, and the only reason I put Moon Knight over it is because I know we're not getting more seasons of Moon Knight. It's already been confirmed. Um, but it was short, but it told a phenomenal story. Everybody loves fighting. That's why Daredevil was A tier. It it had phenomenal storytelling. Honestly, I'm actually gonna put it in A tier. Above Moon Knight. Because it was solid from start to finish. This is how you do a TV show right. As a matter of fact. This is how you do a TV show right. Daredevil, oh my god. Like, I don't know if... I don't know if Marvel can touch that. Like, Moon Knight was a, a solid start. It had that, a really compelling story and I loved it. Oh my god, I loved it. But, I don't know. I don't... I don't know who's going to touch Daredevil as a show. You know what I mean? I don't know who's going to touch Daredevil. Um, that was one of those storytelling done right moments. And The Flash tried to touch it. The Flash tried. I know it's a different genre, but... Genre. It's a different universe entirely. Um, but, like, there's nothing that's really touching Daredevil when it comes to storytelling in a show. Not Marvel, anyway. Um, Luke Cage... C. Matter of fact, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones, totally a C. Um, they pretty much go hand in hand. They see each other. They have sex. It was I, it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable. I feel like they could have been better. Um, especially in later seasons. Uh, I put Luke Cage over Jessica Jones. Luke Cage was very good for me. Um, but... I feel like they still could have been better. Thor Love and Thunder hasn't come out yet. Neither has Miss Marvel. Oh, Jesus. I'm so afraid to go to these. It could have been better. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, why isn't that lower? It definitely could have been better. Oh, Jesus. I can't. I can't even make an argument for it. It was just bad. I'm sorry. It was just bad. And while we're on the topic of bad. Yeah. 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 Venom 2 is awful. Venom 1, it's dumb because it's not even... Oh shit, it's almost it's almost fucking terrible. I enjoyed Venom, that is the only reason that it's in subpar. I en I enjoyed the movie, but comic accuracy be damned, that shit was terrible. Oh my god. That terrible. You've got Venom and Carnage in the same universe and neither one of them have seen Spider-Man. That's fucking insane to me because they normally start with Spider-Man and that's how he gets his iconic suit and then he goes to Eddie Brock and Carnage is a baby of Venom yes but again after Venom meets Spider-Man and Venom decides he needs help and it was really by accident he didn't even mean to make Cletus, Cla Cletus Cassidy 
as crazy as he was. Like, he knew he needed somebody, but I don't think he was trying to make something fucking insane. Ugh, don't even give me spot. Oh, my God. Why was Spider-Man cocky? What about what about what about Peter Parker to you live and breathes that he's a cocky little shit that is super confident in himself? And what to you makes you think that he could bitch uh Oh my god, what's his name? Uh shit. Flash. I don't know why I couldn't think of his name. What makes you think that Peter Parker in high school ever had the confidence to bitch Flash? Are you kidding me? Flash Thompson beat the shit out of him for the majority of high school. Like, that's just a fact. Like, Flash did not like Peter, period. And every chance he got, he bitched Peter. And... Mind you, obviously Peter's going to hold back. He's not going to use his spider powers. Why do we have this confident little shit bitching, the Fla b bitching Flash Thompson in his first movie, mind you? His first movie. What? Are you, are you joking? And then all of a sudden, Flash understands that his uncle died and gives him a hug. I'm not gonna lie to you. Flash is a dick. Flash is wholeheartedly a dick. And that is a rarity that shouldn't have happened until like his third movie. At best. Spider-Man 2? F a waste of space. Spider-Man... The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was a waste of space. And you can't argue with me. Mind you, I love... I love Andrew Garfield. I thought it was cool that there was a different touch to him. But he was not comic accurate, period. The suit, maybe, but other than that, oh shit! Oh my god, that was just fuck. Like, bro, like he had confidence before he turned into Spider Man. What? And and they did a great job of him being smart. Like I like I was happy that they did the smart Peter Parker thing very well, but everything else was just bad. Everything else was just bad. Oh my god, I hated it so much. Like I love, like I love Andrew Garfield. Like I'm glad he made it. I'm, I'm glad he made it. But damn, the storytelling just. Oh my god, was so bad. Oh shit! Don't even get me started. Spider Man Two, that shitty Electro. Don't get me wrong. Um, Jamie Foxx is always a win. His character in Spider Man Two was a fat L. Massive L. You cannot convince me that it wasn't. That was just point blank period bad. And I will never forgive them for that. Never. I will never forgive them for doing that to him. And I'm glad he got his redemption story in this movie. And that's why it's A tier. We got a lot of redemption stories in that fucking movie. Oh, Jesus. Venom 1. The only reason it's in subpar is because it was a it was a subpar film. Um, I like the the uh, I like the contrast with Eddie and Venom. I like their relationship. I do. It just should have happened after he met Spider Man. I'm sorry. That's just that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just that's what it is. Uh, people are gonna hate me for this, but I actually, I actually enjoyed Captain Marvel. Um, it's not better than any of these right here, but I actually enjoyed Captain Marvel. Um, everybody gives her shit about trying to be a strong woman and this, that, and the third and whatever. I'm like, I ain't gonna lie. Y'all are a little sexist. Uh, let's be real. Like, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. The, the thing about a cat scratching Nick Fury's eye is very... 
this badass character gets scratched in the eye and like I know it was an alien cat, but still. Come on, man. What? What are we doing? But I actually I actually enjoy Captain Marvel. Like a lot of powers are confidence based. And her powers were being uh suppressed. Like I'm I'm totally okay with the movie. Like I like I actually thought it was pretty good. And that's why it's in the pretty good tab. I actually thought it was pretty good. And I don't know. I, I don't know. People give it so much shit. Eternals. I can't put it there. I think the story could have been better. Oh God. I think the story could have been better. Um, but I love the elements of it. It's definitely not better than Captain Marvel. It's better than the shows. It's better than the shows. Maybe it's behind Captain Marvel. I just... I know people were, were mad about the whole... The, um... What's it called? The... Oh my god. I'm trying to think. About the Superman stuff. But you don't understand, like... That's what the Eternals were. Like, they were... The Eternals were like a Justice League. Like, literally. And... Icarus was very Superman-esque. Shit, if anything, Eternals did it better than the DCU did. Argue with your mama. Uh, to be completely honest, they really did it better. Let's be real. Um, I love, I love that the uh, the black guy had a big role, and he was gay. That was a dub for the LGBTQ community. That was a dub for sure. It was a dub for the black community too. He was, he was one of the reasons they were able to even partially stop Icarus. Love it. I love that they're not shying away from stuff like that in Marvel movies now. They're not afraid to throw, you know, throw in stuff that other people find unfavorable. Um, I'm super happy that Marvel is going in that direction. I know people are like, they're just doing that for money, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, of, I mean, of course, it's a business. Like, that's... That's what that is. But I'm still happy to see the representation. Like, this movie and this movie. I'm happy to see the representation. Um, and we don't get a lot of that in the DC or in Marvel. And that's why I love King Queen Lion because he has his own comic book out named Flame, which I think you guys should go purchase. Um, I might put a link in the description, you feel me? Um, but I personally believe that movies like movies and shows and comic books have a medium and i feel like they should be trying harder to bring us and them in more um i feel like it's a great way for representation because if you haven't noticed the amount of nerds and geeks has skyrocketed in the past maybe five years since i graduated high school like I don't know if y'all noticed that there are a lot more of us out there now and are happy with being out in the open with it than there were ever. Because at first, we were like the quiet kids and we just didn't say shit. Now, mind you, I was a quiet kid, but I was also a jock, a nerd, a geek. I was an all-around all everything. Like, I could be friends with everybody, but there were certain people that I couldn't talk to certain things about. I couldn't talk to my football friends about shit like the Avengers or fucking I used to watch uh uh Teen Wolf with with the homies. Like we used to like we dead ass used to watch Teen Wolf because we're boys. We like fighting. And uh of course there was drama in Teen Wolf, but nigga, there was a lot of fighting. That's what we was there for. We was there for the fights. But I could only talk to that certain group with that than I couldn't talk to other people with. And that's the same thing with Marvel. But now I find more people I find even more women. Before, women didn't even want to look at a nigga that liked anime or stuff like this. But now, they prefer it. Because they know we sitting our asses in the house. <laughs> watching Marvel movies all day. Making videos about Marvel movies and shit. I'm just saying, fellas. Open up about it. You might see some. But yeah, I think that representation is super huge. Especially in mainstream media so i feel like 
movies like this will always work. Movies like this are always going to work. Movies like this are always going to work because we're getting representation. Like, like, look at, like, look at this. White guy, white guy, white guy, white guy, majority white cast, one black guy, white guy, majority white cast, majority white cast, black guy, majority white cast, majority white cast. There's one black woman in there, majority white cast. At, matter of fact, Mordo's the only black person. Nah, Mordo and Captain Marvel are only two black people in this movie. Majority black cast, majority Asian, white, white. White, 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 white. Diverse. Very diverse. This is the most diverse movie in this list. That's insane. This one movie is the most diverse in this entire list. And that's sad. But that's also why it's up here. That's why it was good. It showed us that we can have movies like this and they can be successful. Y'all just have to get your heads out of your asses and go and see these movies and they would be ranked better. They'd make more movies and they'd be better at making movies like this. I love Edward Norton's, Edward Norton's Hulk. Um, I heard he was very problematic in the studio, but um, I really do. I really do like his, uh, like his Hulk. Um, I'm not going to say he's the best Hulk. I love Mark Ruffalo to death. I wish he had his own solo film and it wasn't, this is, te this is canon. This is Hulk's canon origin story. Um, and that's sad because Mark Ruffalo is never going to get his solo film. He's getting a, a TV show with, and he's co-starring it with She-Hulk and it's her show. So really he's not even co-starring it. It's her show and he's there. And it's really sad because I really like Mark Ruffalo and I wish he had gotten better representation too. Um, I feel like he would have been, I feel like he would have been great if he got an origin story. I feel like erasing this movie would be fine. Um, even though I really, even though I really like Edward Norton's Hulk and at the end of the movie, it was showing how he was able to control the transformation, which was so dope. I feel like we could still let it go and we could still have another one. Hold on, I gotta go to the bathroom. And I'm back, just like that. Nothing changed for you guys. I just paused the recording. OBS is lovely. Um, think we talked about the Edward Norton stuff? Yeah. Like I said, solid movie. Um, solid, solid actor. Could have been better. It, it could have been better. We know that it could have been better. We're glad we got Abomination. Oh, that was another thing. Uh, Abomination is really canon now. <laughs> It's super duper canon. It's in the end of Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. I'm so sorry. I keep saying Shang-Chi. I'm so sorry. Shang-Chi. Um, what other movie is he in? Hasn't come out yet. Oh my god. We still have so much to get through. And this video is already long. Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Others thought the pacing was super slow. And I'd look, he have to agree. Um, I feel like it could have been better. I'm happy with the outcome. I'm happy with where we got um, after the movie. I'm happy with where we ended. Um, it was a good show. I liked it. Um, I, was one of the, I was one of the ones going to bat for it. And then the rest of the shows started dropping and I was just like, I can't keep fighting everybody on this opinion. I'm happy with the outcome. I'm happy that they went the comics way, gave uh, uh, Falcon the shield, Sam the shield, uh, Winter Soldier got his redemption for the most part. Um, we got a deep dive into both of their psyches, but fucking Sam's included. Sam's was so, oh man. Huh, Sam's story, the first black Captain America was a super soldier and everything. And they just weren't going to say anything about it because that's how things were back then. And he had already been through a lot of shit and he doesn't want that publicity now anyway. And there's also a theory, which Black Widow's the next one, um, that that's who her dad fought and it wasn't Steve. He believes that he fought Captain America, but... 
Steve was frozen ice at the time that he's saying that he fought him. So we think that it was uh, Isaiah. We believe that it was the the first black Captain America. And I'm happy that we have the second. Um, and with the shield. Um, had some solid fight sequences. John Walker going off his rocker. Like we knew he was going to be the villain. But it was so crazy how it happened. Like he knew who punched um, his. I hate to call him a sidekick because he was black too. But who who uh, killed his friend? Like he knew who did it, and still decapitated. Basically, an innocent man. Like he, I mean, he had his own hand to play with the fights and stuff. But like he didn't hold the guy down and get her to punch him. He got into the fight and then she punched him. So like that that was super weird to me. That was a super weird way to go to make him crazy. I think. Like I think they should have I think they should have had him punch his friend and kill him and then his motivation for killing the guy would have made more sense in my opinion. But I I, I think that it could have been better overall. I think it should have been longer. Cause I feel like things were like super like the pacing was slow. But stuff was thrown in super rushed. And then we finally get to the last episode and he's Captain America. You know what I mean? I feel like that it should have been flushed out more. I think that I think that would have put it in in B tier for me. Uh where's the first Guardians of the Galaxy? First Guardians in the Galaxy was fucking phenomenal. Um fucking phenomenal. Uh, as a gr- as a grouped movie like it was, them coming together in the prison and everything, Ca- Guardians of the Galaxy, and then the, the soundtrack, you cannot tell me that Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't a solid-ass movie. I loved everything about Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think I have a single gripe about it, for the most part. I can't really call it a, a 10 out of 10 movie, but it's definitely like a 9.5 out of 10, for sure. I think that was super solid of a movie. And the same thing goes with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Like, what can I say? They just, they, they did it twice. They made a good movie twice, which is super hard to do. Especially for a sequel of a movie, because we're about to get to the Thors. It was a super solid fucking movie. Super fucking solid. I can't believe they did two movies... Ego, the living planet. Quill being a celestial. That's why he was able to touch the power stone for so long. Like, bro. Like, that's pretty fucking dope. Like, that was a that was a dope-ass story. And the first Guardians. Oh, his mom getting cancer. They're, they're always killing moms and dads and uncles and aunties out here, man. It's a Marvel thing, I believe. It's just a Marvel thing. It sucks. But, yeah. Fucking uh, great movies. The soundtrack really puts the soundtrack puts the movies together so well. I can't wait for Guardians of the Galaxy three. It's gonna be so good. I know it is. Uh, where are we going from here? Let's just go ahead and let's just go ahead and say it. Is this it? That I know that's not Ragnarok, right? Sorry, it's a little hard to see here. It's fucking my head up. Hold on, guys. Give me one second. Yo, I just got a pretty good phone call. That's why I had to pause. I just got offered a job on contract. Your boy is going to have insurance. That's what I'm excited about. I feel old. (laughs) Being excited about a job to have insurance is crazy. Oh, but you need it in this day and age. Anyways, we were hyping up Guardians of the Galaxy. Pretty fucking solid. All right, back to a show. WandaVision. Gotta remember 
all the elements. Dark Hole was pretty good. It was it was really slow pacing, but I think the build up made the most sense. Now, for me, it was kind of ruined because if you watch Game Theory, you know that Game Theory and Movie Theory uh, and everything that everything that he does, his theories kind of spoil stuff by accident, and it kind of sucks. Because most of WandaVision was damn near spoiled by one of his theories, legitimately. Like, we knew Agatha... We, we knew she was going to be Agatha Harkness. Like, we knew we knew that. That was just kind of tough. It was cool to see how powerful she was, though. It was cool to see Wanda being able to fight back. And we finally saw the Scarlet Witch. Which, that's what puts it into B tier for me. What? Um, that's what puts it into B tier for me, for sure. Um, I think it was I think it was a solid uh, show for Marvel. I think they think this was the first step in the right direction, um, including Loki and What If, of course. But I think it was a good step in the right direction. Um, I love the other thing about it. She fucked around and made they they tried to make her the villain, and and that's part of her motivations for Multiverse of Madness. They tried to make her the villain, but she really didn't do much of anything if that makes sense like yeah she enslaved the whole town and once she realized what she did she didn't really let it go so that's what kind of made her the villain but at the end she let them go like she knew she wasn't supposed to be doing that like she knew that but um at that point in time we hadn't even seen multiverse of madness though so i'm gonna speak purely if i hadn't seen it um i think it was really good storytelling though she went through all the stages of grief Um, she didn't want outsiders to come in unless they had been completely turned because then people would be poking around and ruining her happiness that she was trying to make for herself, which leads into her motivations for Multiverse of Madness, which was, I think it's like, bro, if you didn't see WandaVision, then some stuff that they talk about in Multiverse of Madness, you don't understand. And that's why I keep saying you need to watch these shows because in Multiverse of Madness, they talk about her kids. But if the last movie that you saw her in was Endgame, then you don't know what the fuck she's talking about. What kids? Why does she have this magic book that has her doing all this crazy stuff? Uh, Doctor Strange, she goes to see her where she is and... She says, I figured you'd come and see me about Westview. Where the fuck is Westview? You don't know because you didn't watch the show. And I keep, I, and that's why I keep saying it over and over and over again. You need to see these shows and you need to catch up and watch them. Otherwise, some of these, some of these things aren't going to work. You're just not going to know. And that's why I think it's, I, that's why I think it's solid. I think that's why it's solid to me um, that they can coincide like that. That's why I think it's solid. Oh, we were looking at... We were trying to figure out where where it was. Where's that fucking Thor movie? Are there only two? I thought there were three. Where's Thor Dark World? Or am I tripping? Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. Uh, yeah, it is right here. Fucking bad. Thor Dark World is probably the one of it's one of the worst movies in Marvel fucking history. Everything about oh my god, everything about the movie was terrible. Like they redeemed themselves with Ragnarok and the first Thor of course was good. Thor Dark World was just bad. Like that was when we realized that they were changing the stones for real for real. Like I guess the first time they really changed the stone was the cube. That's supposed to be its own thing. That's supposed to be the cosmic cube. Instead, they just said that it housed an infinity stone. Gem, whatever you want to call it. Which was dumb to me, but of no fault of their own, they were trying to be different. It's understandable. This shit, this ether shit, all, th- this movie is just bad. This movie's just bad. And I'm going to put it in D tier because I don't think it's as bad as these. 
but it's not as good as this and it's definitely on the same level as these oh jesus um another show b tier um i think punisher was pretty good i didn't i not gonna lie i haven't finished punisher so i feel like i shouldn't even be able to talk about this um that's how, but that's how I know it's under Daredevil for sure. Who, me not finishing it really skews that, and I apologize. I apologize for sure. But I, I there, there's not much that I could say about it. The first Ant Man could have been better too. It was definitely better than Ant Man and Wasp though, for sure. But that was remember when I talked about a show that was just kind of put somewhere and then. You know, we come back later to it into a movie. Ah, it didn't do much for me. You know what I'm saying? And Spider-Man gets away with it because we always love a Spider-Man anything for the most part. And he had had three arcs, which was good. But I feel like Ant-Man just could have been better all around. It was cool that they nodded to Captain Falcon and them being that Avengers uh, thing, but... Other than that, it was just it was one of those movies that were just like, eh, I don't have to watch it to know everything that's going on in the rest of MCU. And see, that's another thing. Ant-Man can just show up in Civil War, and I would be fairly okay with that. Honestly. Like, like Captain Falcon just knowing uh, Ant-Man, I would personally be just okay with that. Like, I don't necessarily need an Ant-Man movie, if that makes sense. Like, I needed a Doctor Strange movie for sure because he's strong as shit and him just randomly showing up is kind of wild. We kind of know who Ant-Man is and we kind of know that Hank Pym was around the same time that Steve was back in the day. So their being predecessors makes sense. Um, That's just one of those things that makes sense. So Falcon somehow knowing him could have been, you know... It's one I didn't need a movie. That's why I feel like it could have been better. If they had told a more compelling story to me, it could have been higher on the list. But first Iron Man, it's a great movie. We know we know Iron Man's a great movie. He he built it he built it with a box of stra- scraps in a cave. Come on, man, a box of scraps. If this doesn't tell you how smart Tony Stark is, I don't know what will. Like, let's be frank. I don't know what's gonna... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. If this doesn't show you how smart Tony Stark is, he built it with a box of scraps in a cave. What? That's insane. He thought his way out of an unwinnable situation. Come on. That's, that's almost a great movie. It's almost a great movie. I feel weird not putting it in great movie. I might put it there. Mm, Avengers Age of Ultron. Think we'll come back to that. Think we'll come back to that. First Spider-Man movie. It's pretty good. First Spider-Man's up. First Spider-Man's up there with the first Iron Man movie for sure. Um, I think it was a great way to start Peter out. Um, to start MCU Peter out. Let's make that clear. I think the next movie is a great way. If we didn't want to, if if you said that you wanted to start with the Spider-Man origin story for the most part, this would be the movie you'd start with. Well, a Peter Parker origin story. A Peter Parker coming into Spider-Man. What? And I think the next three movies are a good coming into Spider-Man movie. I think those are going to be three Spider-Man movies. And I think these are three Peter Parker movies, if that makes sense. And yes, I put Far From Home above... Damn. Mm, I don't know if I can do that. 
don't know if I can do that. Not gonna lie to you. I don't know if I can do that. Might have got you might have just got bullied down. Not gonna lie to you. What is, is it not as good as I remember? I'm trying to think. He had his own suit before Tony showed up, and then Tony gave him a suit, and then... I don't think it's as good as I remember it being. Legitimately. I just don't... I don't think it's as good as I remember it being. Either that or Iron Man's just better than I... Yeah. I think that's what it is. Iron Man's just better than I was giving it credit for. There we go. Yeah. That's, that's what was going on for sure. Captain America and Winter Soldier is also a great movie. Um, I thought that was a really compelling story. I love the whole. I love the fact that Bucky just randomly came, just not randomly came back, but came back as a Winter Soldier, like he does in the comics. Um, I think this is a very comic esque movie, and I loved every bit of it. Um, it that's a it's a great movie to me. Uh, I definitely I put it up. I put I put I put that above Civil War for a reason. Like I think that's a great. Captain America movie. Civil War was not a Captain America movie. I don't give a shit. Like, we know that Civil War wasn't a Captain America movie. Trying to get a new car. Um, but yeah, I put Captain America uh, went to Civil War over Civil War simply because this was supposed to be a Captain America movie and then we had hella motherfuckers fighting. This was another Avengers level movie for the most part. Like this is just another Avengers movie. Like who didn't, we didn't have Thor and we didn't have Hulk. It's two people, dog. Everybody else is here. Like shit. Black Widow, super controversial. I thoroughly enjoyed Black Widow. I think it was a great movie. I think that all of the bullshit that people were putting it through was bullshit. To me, I think it was bullshit for sure. Um, I loved uh, Black Widow. I think that the pacing was a little off at times. Was definitely a little off at times, but I, that's why it's not in great movie. It's in pretty good. Um, it's a movie that I would go back and watch maybe one more time. I'm not going to watch it a whole lot, but I think it was a great origin story for Natasha. Well, origin, you know, the beginning, they tell you about stuff that was going on, and then you get to the end, and... Um, Mm, you know, it's a toss up. Like sometimes I feel like it needs to be here, and I might keep it there for right now. We're gonna mull that one over. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mull that one over. Cause I liked it. I really did like it. And this is on my opinion, but at the same time, no. The ta I just thought about the Taskmaster thing. Definitely sitting down there. I can't do it. The Taskmaster thing, no. No, I realize I just remembered how bad they fucked that up. No, we're done. Nope. C tier. Could have been so much better. That shit sucked. Iron Man 2 was pretty good. Iron Man 2 was definitely it was lower than Iron Man, but it was definitely pretty good. Um I like the whiplash stuff. That was immaculate. Tony Stark was very on brand. Brody was on brand. I think it was a solid, solid movie. Iron Man 3. Could have been better. What can I say? It definitely could have been better. I just... They did the Mandarin terrible. They did the Mandarin awful. That dude was an actor. Dude was an actor. 
for the real Mandarin who turned out to be some white dude who still wasn't the Mandarin because we get the Mandarin here. And they make fun of that in that movie. That's what's crazy. Yeah, Iron Man 3 just wasn't... It just didn't give what it was supposed to have gave. Like, I understand the sentiment of destroying all of his suits, but he just made more. I look you in your eyes as I demote it to D tier. As all of the memories flood back, yeah. Thor Ragnarok, fucking solid. I think that that is one of the... I think that is probably the best Thor movie. Where are the other Thors at? Did I already put them up here? No. Oh, yeah, we... Yeah. Um, I think this is the best Thor movie. Um, as a matter of fact, it goes into great. Because this goes here. I think Thor Ragnarok is the best Thor movie. It is phenomenal. Um, I loved that. I love Thor Ragnarok. Because it showed that Thor was more than just his hammer. And that's what people forget. Like, Thor has power... The hammer is just to guide it. You know what I'm saying? And people don't know that. Like, people don't know that he got Stormbreaker specifically just to kill Thanos. It wasn't necessarily something he needed to fight anybody, but Thanos was a Stormbreaker level threat, a Mjolnir level threat. Thor could beat the shit out of just about anybody hand to hand. He already has power. That's all he needs. He just... Needed something with a little bit more oomph that could fight something as powerful as the Infinity Gauntlet. That's the only reason he needed a Stormbreaker. You know, he could lose that motherfucker now and he'd still win a battle pretty easily. But we got Korg. We got, um, we basically got Planet Hulk without getting Planet Hulk, which is also dumb. Fucking dumb. Oh, they did that so bad. That could have been so much better. We got Hela. I thought that was cool. Odin died. It, oh, it has so many great elements. That's what makes this a great movie. Um, fellas, ladies... Sorry, I've been having a lot of business calls and business texts and emails and stuff that I gotta that I, I have to stay on top of because if I'm gonna do this, I gotta do that stuff. Um, we were talking about the Thors, how good Thor Ragnarok. Thor Thor Ragnarok was a really good MCU movie. I really loved it. Um, Hawkeye, I thought was a solid TV show. Um, people gave it their hate and stuff like that, but I thought it brought a lot of awareness to people that are deaf, people that are mute. I really love the representation there. I I like that they brought in the fact that Hawkeye was going deaf from all the explosions that go on behind you know behind his head and the, all the shit that he's had to go through throughout the years. Because you see a Marvel hero and you see that they go through and they do all this death defying stuff, so you think they can't die and they don't have psychological things happen. But then you get a show like this where you show that he has survivor's guilt, like. A lot of his friends died, and he didn't. Nat died when he wanted to die, and he wanted to save her, and he couldn't. That was a big part of the show. And then all the explosions shit that he had been... All the shows that he had been through and everything... Uh, all, all, yeah, all the explosions, all the fights and everything... And we always think that they're so invincible, but we got to forget, some of these guys are only human. Like, getting your eardrum busted out, like, for us, that fucking sucks. Somebody like Thor is going to heal. He's he's not immortal, but he's controversial. He's an alien. But, for you know, for the most part, he's a god. Hmm, is Zeus a god or is he an alien? Huh interesting development but yeah i think it's i think it's a solid show i think this was another step in the right direction for marvel shows they're all really short but and that's my only caveat with them them being so short but they were good Avengers: age of ultron it gave us vision but i still think that it could have been better um all of the the weird infighting that we're doing 
they were it just like I, I know Tony Stark goes behind people's backs a lot, but more most of the time he's right. Now he did not mean to make Ultron, and I think that's why it's in C tier for me because in the comics Hank Pym is the one. No, yeah, Hank Pym is the one that creates Ultron by accident. And Iron Man makes it worse because he has all this technology and stuff that Ultron can attach himself to. So that's why I think that I would have been, I would have been even more okay with Ant-Man had Hank Pym been the one that created Ultron. That brings us into knowing who Hank Pym is, which in, which then brings us to know who this Ant-Man is. You know what I'm saying? I think that would have been a better way to bring that around. And for that, I just, it's in C tier. I think it's a movie that I probably will never watch again for the most part. I, like, I watched clips and stuff. They did Quicksilver dirty as fuck in this movie. No. You you give us a mutant and you take it away. Okay. Like, no. It just, that that wasn't it for me. The original Avengers movie, though, is fucking phenomenal. I would almost argue that it's an S-tier movie. I could probably argue it up there, but for the sake of the video, I'm not going to. For the sake of the video, I'm not going to. We're already at almost an hour and a half. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm not going to argue it into S-tier, which I definitely could, but it's a solid fucking movie. Um, and I put it over Infinity War. Because the first it's the first team up, and I think they did it so well. This ragtag group of people that ordinarily wouldn't normally fight together, but the world needed them. They needed them, and they stepped the hell up. They stepped the hell up and did it, and I loved every minute of it. Is this the first Captain Marvel movie? Captain Marvel. This is the, the first Captain Mar Captain America movie. It's pretty good. It was solid. I think it was a great way to start his character. Um, him, the way he got his powers, uh, the fights that he went through, losing Bucky, and then getting frozen in the ice. I think that that was accurate Marvel storytelling for Captain America because that is exactly how it happened. And him touching the Cosmic Cube, the Infinity Stone, I think he did try to make his wish. And that it was for Bucky to have survived. Not knowing that it was going to turn him into the Winter Soldier. Which is what happened in the comics. That's how that happened. So I... Super solid for me. Um, mm, what is this? Far From Home? Um, yeah, I think that's Far From Home. Uh, we got Mysterio. That was pretty cool. Um, this is off the heels of losing Tony Stark. He was still in mourning, so he wasn't... His head wasn't that on straight. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was weird because, like... <sighs> this movie's weird for me because at times he's mourning Captain... He's mourning Tony Stark. And at other times, he seems really happy. That was after he told MJ, though. So, okay, never mind. Mm, where would I put that on this list? It's a really good movie. I don't think... It's either A or B tier. I think it's B tier. Um... I, think I, put... I think it's a solid B tier movie. I don't know. Um, like, people want to argue that this movie is better than uh, No Way Home. But I would argue that he didn't have very much character development in this movie. Um, like, at all. He got to tell... He, he got to tell MJ that he was Spider-Man and he finally got his girl. Uh, but... He learned not to trust people, which he should have already known. He had so much self-doubt. I think, okay, I think that was his character development, though. He 
he had so much self doubt, and then he decided to trust himself with, you know, his Peter Tingle, which I thought was stupid as shit to call it, fucking Peter Tingle. Uh, I think that's what that's also something else that puts it in pretty good. They 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 like to change a lot of things to try to be different from the comics, but I feel like calling something the Peter Tingle is weird. It's just weird. And with that being said, I think they're on the same level. Um, Aunt May dying was kind of weird. Like, I know I'm kind of going back on what I said, but... It's not that I feel like she didn't have to die, but... Her saying the words is different than Uncle Ben saying the words. Like, I feel like they keep trying to be different and just won't adhere to, you know... The, they just won't adhere to what we got, which is weird to me. So I think all three of them are just, I don't know. People had redemption stories. I don't know. I still I still put it as the, it's, I don't give a shit. Y'all can be mad at me. It's the best, it's the best Spider-Man movie. Fuck y'all talking about. And then we come to the Sam Raimi movies. It's a great fucking movie. Argue with your mama. The first Spider-Man movie, the first Spider-Man movie we ever got is goaded. It's better than this movie as well. First Spider-Man movie we ever got was goaded. This goes into beats here. We we know where Spider-Man three goes, but Spider-Man two was also solid. Um, Green Goblin, whoa, Hobgoblin, Green Goblin Part two. I don't, I don't know what to call him necessarily, but the fact that Harry was finna fuck around and pick up the mantle was crazy. He finally found his, at the end of the movie when he found his dad's uh, stuff and we go into Spider-Man 3. And that's why I'm moving this up to could have been better. The Venom suit, oh, I can't. It's the, it's the Venom shit that fucks the whole movie apart. Like it was cool that it got Peter first, but then he just started walking around Humping the air. I'm sorry, subpar. I can't. I can't. Like they did the like they did Venom Origins right, but they just didn't do. They just didn't do Venom right. Why did he look like that? Like he should have looked like this. He should look like this Venom and this Carnage. He just looks so bad. Oh, an hour and a half in. And I think this is the final look. We didn't have that many terrible films, which is good, but we had a lot of D-tier and subpar as fuck movies. I'm not going to put Ann Watts down there. I almost want to move this down here. It's weird. And it's it's this thing with threes, man. It's this thing with threes with them just being so bad. Like, look at the movies that are here. Like, it's always the sequels. Now, mind you, this movie wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't good either. Uh, they did lizard stuff. They did the lizard okay. They did the lizard pretty good. It was... Uh, man, they just didn't do my boy justice in a lot of these. They just... It's not any fault of Andrew Garfield. They just didn't do him good. Whoops. Uh, sorry. Excuse me. But this is my tier list. Um, and I, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, I'm sure some of you could argue that some of these could go up here and that some of these could come down here. This is my opinion. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that Black Panther is probably the best MCU movie to ever be created. Um, because of the story. like the And rewatchability is a big thing for me. Like, a lot of these movies, I can't just go back and rewatch at any point in time. Like, if I'm going to do a Marvel movie watch-a-thon, I can do that. But going back to watch an individual movie as many times as I've seen it, as many times as I've watched Shang-Chi now, I could go back and watch Moon Knight. It was really good. I'd go back and watch Daredevil. I can go back and watch Endgame. I could even go back and watch Infinity War. But in terms of watchability what it meant to my culture specifically, what it meant to, you know, other cultures, Shang-Chi, like, Shang-Chi. Why do I keep doing that? I think it's because people keep saying it like that. Shang-Chi. Um, 
I think that that's why they're in my S tier. There's they're great movies, period. They didn't have faults. Like even the ending of Black Panther was good. The way Killmonger when he asked him if he uh when Black Panther asked him, he said, Maybe we can still save you. What, so you can lock me up in jail? Nah, I'd rather you bear I'd rather you bury me in the ocean with my brothers and sisters that knew that death was better than bondage and then basically kills himself, pulls pulls the uh spear out and lets himself die. I think that was like when it comes to character motivation, it was all there. Killmonger was a phenomenal villain. Period. Just like Thanos. Phenomenal villain, period. Matter of fact, just got promoted. That's my S tier list, ladies and gentlemen. This is my tier list. I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to do more tier lists. I think I'm going to do rapper tier, tier list next. All time greats and all that stuff. And I'm going to be controversial in there too. Because I don't give a shit. If you don't like Eminem, I don't give a damn. It's one of the greatest of all time. And you can't argue that. If you like Machine Gun Kelly, you're biased and you just hate you just hate Eminem at that point. If you think he won that, if you think he won that debate, you're, you're, you don't know a sense of music. I just, I, there's not nothing I can help you with with that. But that's my tier list, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you, ruthless fam, in the next episode. Adios. Mm-hmm.